Let's let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. All right, one of the things we want to start bringing into the news and notes on the show is just some discussion around what's taking place with the NFL, the National Football League Players Association, all the implications of COVID and how the health and safety of the players and the different uh, circumstances surrounding this very strange 2020 season may impact your fantasy team and what's just keep you in the know on what's going on. So as of this recording, which we're recording this show late Monday afternoon, releasing it on Tuesday, and uh, here, here's the headline news that I think our listeners would be interested in. Uh, for one, players are, uh, veterans are going to report to training camp on July 28th. And that schedule, that timing has not changed. The NFL and NFLPA, as of this afternoon, have agreed to daily COVID-19 testing. Which is great. Yeah, it's great uh, if you're not the ones getting the tests up the nose. <laughs> it's great for ball. having football. Yes, it's great for keeping. It's great for player safety, health, safe, safe yeah. player football. safety, and making sure that the season continues. So I, I view this as a major win for the players and for the fans. Yes, and uh, and for the NFL, so called it. Uh, tr- it's a win. threat. It's a win, win, win. That's right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this was something the players wanted. If you saw the Twitter campaigns from tons of players, they were pushing towards health and safety daily testing. It'll cost the NFL a bunch of money, but uh, then it'll they, save the NFL a yeah, bunch of money. It will. Uh, then to to the fantasy aspects here, something we've been discussing in our league, uh, as proposed by the NFL, players who test positive for COVID nineteen would be placed on the commissioner exempt list with no minimum or maximum stay. So originally, this was reported that there would be a minimum three-week stay on the IR, a specific designation. Uh, Now it seems like there's no minimum or maximum stay. But we've been talking in our league about how Mm -hmm. to accommodate these kind of uh, crazy circumstances for this year because you have rosters with roster sizes, IR spots, decisions to be made on a week-to-week basis. And I actually really, Mike, I'm going to turn it over to you because uh, you made the point of – Basically, when we were discussing this with our league, that COVID has, you know, this this pandemic <laughs> COVID sucks, man. has done like, enough to kind yeah. of ruin this year that you didn't want it to ruin your fantasy league. Yeah, it, exactly. Some people want to treat COVID. So, you know, a player gets sick. They're going to miss a couple of weeks. They want to treat that as that's just that's uh, like an injury risk. That's part of the game. We, you can't project it. It's just going to, it's going to happen. And we, look, it's going to, ha- it's probably going to happen. We don't know what the scale will be. Maybe it's just a few players. I mean, really, really hope it's that. Well, you, well, you hope it's none. You realistically hope it's a few, uh, but it could be more. We just, we have no clue. And uh, my proposal to the league was put as many IR spots in as the your platform will allow and those are just dedicated to covid and if a player contracts it they go on there and everyone there is an honor system built in that the second they are activated from by the nfl then they're back on your active squad you have to either cut players you got to you know make your roster legal but my whole argument was covid is terrible i have we I'm, we're trapped in our homes. You know, I've been, tr- my wife and I have been trapped in our house with our kids for like 130 days or something. It's ruining things all over the country for any semblance of normal life. Let's minimize what it does to your fantasy football roster because we know it's going to affect it, right? Like, it, it's just, it's part of life now uh, for the foreseeable future. So minimize it as much as as we possibly can, just like the NFL is trying to minimize it with with safety protocol as much as they possibly can. Yeah, and so I, I like that strategy. I mean, I, you know, you don't know how many players it's going to affect. You want a fair playing field for everybody in your league, and you want to minimize the amount of, uh, you know, disruption that it brings to an already disrupted season. So, uh, we'll keep tracking with what the NFL does on these fronts, and hopefully with daily testing, with uh, you know, smart people out there wearing masks, numbers going down. Maybe by the time the season comes along, you know, I think the NHL just had two of mm-hmm. uh, 2,700 of their players and personnel 
test positive. Very small numbers there. I'm hoping that's the way it is in the NFL. Mm -hmm. And that's all we can do right now is hope and then go on to the next day and hope some more. And we know that it's at least now it's not agreed upon, but they are pushing for the players are pushing for an August 1st opt out date. Yes. So, and that that's a couple days after training camp on purpose so that players can go. They can make their own decisions about how safe do they feel and then choose to opt out by the first. Now, what's not settled is the, the what does that do with a contract? Does it toll? What does this do with your eligibility for pension? There are lots and lots of things. Uh, I heard Charles Robinson from Yahoo talking about it, how it almost feels like this is like a mini CBA that is going on where the the regular CBA that takes up to 10 years for them to, go, to negotiate. So they are working on it. Uh, Robinson also talked about uh, the players want no preseason. The NFL has negotiated, said they're going to push for one preseason game. And it sounds like the purpose of that is because they want to go to the places where they are going to have the fan experiment. You know, where the I think Jacksonville said they're going to have 25%. Meanwhile, you have Philadelphia who said they're done. No fans. So they want to at least have a test run at some of these stadiums to see, uh, to you know, work some things out for the safety protocol because this this is what it's all about. We have to keep people safe. Yeah, because we then don't want enjoy football. We don't want a game. We don't want two games and then it's over with. And you have this right. build up and anticipation and excitement, and then you don't enjoy sports. And sports brings a tremendous amount of normalcy and mental health and things like that. You know, having these things to root for and invest yourself in, you know, is valuable. And we're seeing a lot of sports come right. back now. So, yeah, I, it's going to be very interesting. I'm encouraged by the fact that while it's like a mini CBA, it does seem like when they sit down at the table, they're accomplishing something every single time. Some type of agreement, some type of movement forward, evidenced by this COVID daily testing, something the players wanted. So I'm encouraged by that. Yeah, the, the, in the end, the players want to play. Like, their, their coordinated, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, Twitter campaign – was focused around they want to play. The NFL wants the players to play, so we're they're going to play. And I, I'm I'm very yes. encouraged by everything that's happening. I I definitely think we're getting an NFL season. Yeah. If you want more of that, click down there, see the whole episode. Click over there, subscribe to the show. We're here all year round. Do not miss it.